Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny. Zennial is a bullshit generational term made up to make older millennials feel better, Roadblock. And y'all know my co hosts, Justin, see proof below, Bird, and Uncle, oh shit, he's right, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last EDC bag you'll ever want or need. Today, we are exploring if millennials are actually killing Harley and the motorcycle industry as a whole. What's going on, guys? What's up? I might be a little salty, uh, and I might have been the one that wrote those those nicknames. No, no, you you actually did write those. Yes, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> it's just I feel like it's like fucking you know when you're talking about music genres, it's like oh well that's not post rock, that's alternative green uh, Midwestern folk. It's like no, it's fucking rock or hip hop. Like fuck off with the sub genres. That's what I feel about these generational like zennials. Like oh, zennial generation is people who were born July first at seven p.m. between August second at nine forty three a.m. It's like fuck off. No, it's. <laughs> It's you can't fucking get that specific with it. All right, I'm done. Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> is my millennial coming out? <laughs> let it out. Let it out, man. You'll get ulcers. No, man, I'm good. Don't, don't hold it in. I'm good. You'll get ulcers. You'll get gassy. I'm good. So <laughs> I vented a roadblock in between the off air. So <laughs> <laughs> about stupid people. <laughs> yes, stupid people. Stupid fucking people. Yeah. So speaking of stupid people. All the internet trolls. Big and too stupid people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With all the internet trolling experts out there claiming that millennials are ultimately killing the motorcycle industry and Harley as a brand, let's take a look at some real data and kind of go over what's actually happening in our points of view. See, I'm so glad we did this. See, because you're, you're already fucking up because yeah. you're using real data. <laughs> <laughs> That we found on the internet. So. Yeah, that he found on the internet. So, it's got to be true. It's got to be true. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm i just saying it's kind of an annoying thing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what are God. We, what are we doing here? So, Dan from Gears and Gadgets. Oh, yeah, shout out. Did a video. And he, he emailed us about this. And that's what spawned the idea of doing some actual research and coming out and, and giving our points of view on this. He got a lot of hate. Oh, so I should do one about his <laughs> sounds like it millennials video. And he shared with me the demographics of the viewers. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. And <laughs> shout out Dan. No, it's dope. <laughs> I'll tell you what, an awesome move it's all old people <laughs> of course it is <laughs> it's all gen xers who are pissy about millennials so goddamn millennials let's start with demographics now this is not necessarily millennial specific this is just the motorcycle industry in america can we can we put a caveat on this before we start that we have all of well i'm pretty sure we have most of the sources listed in the show notes yeah so we might sound a lot like know-it-alls but me, myself, and, and Roadblock are data, at least some sort of involvement in data analytics as yeah. a profession. And Ken's just an internet guru. So, yeah. As in, yeah. he surfs the shit out of the internet. Oh, right? yes. 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 Ken can fucking. I can find something. I don't think he can get to dark web, but he can get to the doormat of the oh, dark web. No, I've got access to the dark okay. web. Okay. Well, oh, you, you have an onion router? I, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the only way he can get the porn that he likes. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Uh, that's that's not for one of our podcasts. We're, we're not talking about. Did you, get, did you, did you see that new uh, latest Epstein episode? No. No. Okay. No. All right. I heard that's getting hard to find, but. So, <laughs> according to a 2018 Motorcycle Industry Council survey, here are the demographics for American riders. The median age is 50 years old compared to 45 years old in 2012. So and for those of you who don't know, median is the middle number between the largest number and the smallest number. So a lot of people don't know that. Okay. So cool. Just clearing it up. So we're seeing the median age growing over the past seven years, six years married. Why does this matter? No, well, you'll see 68% 
of motorcycle owners are married compared to 63% in 2012. This matters because millennials are not getting married. They're not getting married yeah. until later in life. By quite a large margin. Yeah. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's pretty staggering. I, I have heard that millennials are waiting until, you know, they've graduated college mm-hmm. and they are well established into in the their career, yeah. which is usually hitting early to mid thirties. Yeah. It's, it's smart. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I mean, I should have, should have done that, but I didn't. Well, I waited till I was 26 I mean, I to was, get married. Me too. I was, I was 18. Oh yeah. That's just stupid. I yeah. Was. Yeah. Okay. And you're a dumb fuck. I absolutely. Um, 100% <laughs> am so, a dumb fuck for that. <laughs> speaking of college grads, 24% of motorcycle riders in America are college graduates compared to 17% in 2012. This is important a, because more millennials are college graduates. Yep. We are known as being the smartest generation. Uh, I mean, that, I'm, it's oh, book smarts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not saying I that... Mean, it's funny that, that you bring that up. I, I heard a, an interesting stat yes, or this earlier this week that one, um, it, it has to do with information and access to information and the internet and all that kind of stuff. One publication of the New York Post has more information than a normal citizen in the 1700s would have read or heard in their entire lifetime. Well, they, they couldn't read, so. Well, you can so, still. That's why I said heard. Yeah. 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 Glad okay. You, glad you put that in there, the heard part. Yep. This one, is, I think, is, is interesting. Gender. 81% of motorcycle riders in America are men. 19% are women. Now, this, is, this, this may be a little gender bias or something because they don't talk about any other genders. But in well, 2009, only 2 Ten percent of the riders were women. Wow, that's a percent, or almost a percent per year. Yeah, that that's is that's huge. Impressive, yeah, and that's one in every five women, or one of every five riders. I mean, are yeah. women. That's crazy. And those women are in the millennial category. That's yeah, I believe it. That's something else that's interesting. So yeah, I mean yeah, if you think about that part, you know. Growing up, like listening to my mom mm-hmm. talk about motorcycles and stuff like that, you know, women don't didn't ride motorcycles. That was a man's thing to do. Yeah, right. So that I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's a stigma. Yeah, it's a whole cultural thing, really. Yeah, yeah it really is. But as we see with groups like the Lita's, there's a lot of women riders. Oh, yeah. They just needed some way to come together. And have their own support culture, system. Yeah. yeah, support system exactly. So, moving down, motorcycle ownership. There's thirteen million one hundred fifty-eight thousand one hundred motorcycles in the United States. This is two million more than in two thousand nine. Now, crazy. if you listen to all the fake news out there especially anyone who's doing any analysis on Harley Davidson, they're saying the older generations are no longer buying motorcycles. So if there's they're dying, if there's <laughs> 2 million more motorcycles, who's buying these? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I follow the, the Cowboys Facebook page and a lot of the people, cause they post pictures of whoever mm-hmm. buys motorcycles. A lot of those people are at least in their forties or fifties. Yeah. Well, that's going to be all about location and demographics of that particular city. But but yeah, I mean, you look at it, we're all considered millennials in some form or fashion. We all have motorcycles. We all have multiple motorcycles. Well, you don't, I don't. yet. No. Wow. But uh Why you call them out like that. No, it's okay. That's a rude move. I accept it. Well, anyways, motorcycles in the household. 8% of American households have a motorcycle. In 2012, there's only 6.94%. So 10,124,000 homes have a motorcycle. That's crazy, if you think about it. 
That still seems small to me. I feel like that does seem like a small number because how many people are in like 330 million around Mm -hmm. in the U.S. And how many people? What's our population here in San Antonio and like Houston? Seven million, I think, is San Antonio or no? We're not that high. No, no. San Antonio has, I think, five million. Yeah, the metropolitan area. It's Houston's the biggest city or the biggest geographical metropolitan area in yeah. Texas, then Dallas, then San Antonio. It's just weird to... Oh, God, to, not even close. 1.3 million in San Antonio. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. As of 2000... Crap. It went away. Yeah, but I think San Antonio, the city itself, is actually the biggest city. Oh, f- square footage. Square or, foot, yeah, square, square miles. miles. It yeah. Would be, yeah. It's the biggest... So Square footage would work, too. Yeah. It's yeah, just a lot <laughs> bigger number. <laughs> a very large number. Um, now... These last two are funny. Household income. The average motorcycle rider in America makes $62,500 compared to 64100 in 2012. So the income range is going down. So so is that that 62000 It says household income. Mm-hmm. Now, is that person or husband no, no, and wife? No, that's, that would be a household. Okay, so, just make sure yeah. that we clarify that, that it's not an individual income, it's the entire household. Right. Okay. Right. And then employment status. 71% of motorcycle riders work. 24% are retired. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, these these demographic numbers here and, and stats... It's important to kind of get that feel because the age of the riders are going up, but the shift in men to women riders is there is a good shift going on. Motorcycle ownership is going up. Now, they surveyed strictly millennials and here are some of the items that came out of that survey. 69% of the millennials that were surveyed say they want electric motorcycles because the environmental impact and fuel economy as the top reasons. Now, I have a hard time oh with God. surveys, man. I really have a hard time with survey data. Well, and, and, and I have a hard time with people saying that you know, electric bikes are more environmentally friendly yeah, than yeah. fossil fuel bikes. Yeah. Look, go pe- look, go look at lithium mines, people. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I guess maybe if you look at it from a, over a long period of time, maybe they're better, but what's the, what's the oh, no. carbon footprint? If you, if you can call it that of a, Lithium ion battery versus oil. I mean, and we gotta gasoline. They're using, you know, diesel and gasoline mining equipment to get that those that lithium yeah. out of the mines. And then they're putting it on ships, which are diesel powered. Yeah. And you know, and then on a truck or a train and I, I don't know. So it's already burned a few things thousand gallons of diesel oh probably millions just to get to the manufacturer to build a battery yeah, <laughs> yeah. um 50 have taken a rider safety course so this is msf rider's edge etc and how do they use their motorcycles commuting i believe that so I'm just going back to the survey thing. I, I need to see more information on this because... The issue here is I was unable to locate how many people yeah. were surveyed. So I, whether I it was want, 100 or 1,000. I want size, location, well, yeah. age. I know it says millennials, but as we've discussed, you guys are millennials. I'm millennial. There's people that are three years younger than me mm-hmm. that are millennials. So what I've noticed is... The average is 1979, 1980 is the birth year Correct. of the millennials. Yes. And they kind of spoke to that a little bit in the articles I've been reading about this. And 1980, 1995 yeah. is generally the term. Yeah. So 
why does all these stats who who cares right why why should we give two shits about this well let's focus in on some of the important items that are specific to millennials oh god the economy millennials came into the workforce during one of the most turbulent economies in history we also most of them yeah 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 good yeah good portion of them did yeah. yeah we also were in an impressionable age during the gas crisis that followed hurricane katrina that caused us to be a bit more mile per gallon conscious than others. I would say that that's a really big one. Yeah. That's the, personally, that's the one that affected me the most. Uh, I was, oh God, when Katrina hit, I was like seventh or eighth grade. What was year was pretty Katrina? Pretty young. Damn. 2006? 2005 or 2006? Yeah. But anyways, I remember seeing... Because I lived on just a, a regular, I mean, y'all have been to Sanderson. You know, all that comes through is trucks. That's literally the only thing that passes through the town, trucks and trains. And I remember seeing trucks start convoys because they found out that if they, you know, catch the draft off of each other, they were saving miles. Oh, yeah. They were saving miles per gallon. Like August you know, of 2005. The, 2005, okay. Those little skirts you see at the bottom of trucks, those came around shortly after. Those oh, things yeah. you see fold out in the edges. Everything was, every major like uh you know technological advance that was in like the the main public view was centered around Ma- you know maximizing fuel economy yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. reducing carbon all that kind of stuff so i think that might be a reason but i think i think one that you point out the uh coming into the workforce at that time was a huge deal as well yeah i, mean, I was already well into the workforce yeah which is funny because y'all were well into it and I wasn't into it yet. Yeah. Well, see, when I joined the Navy, it was shortly after the dot-com bust. And it was September 11th, 2001. Yep. So a lot of shit happened. And even people younger than me coming in, we had the Great Recession hit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with the housing market and all of that. And... We started seeing that spike in costs of college. So speaking of college, 36% of millennials have graduated college. Compared to 1980, where only 24% were college grads. 12% may not sound like a lot, but as the baby boomers start or continue to die off, millennials are the largest population area in the United States. Yeah. You know? So that 12% actually means a lot of people. Yeah, but, that's a big number. I but, mean, but who cares about college, right? Well, college is expensive as fuck. And just getting more and more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And today, it does not guarantee a comfortable living like in 1980. Oh, well, no. Not even close. If no, you graduate no. from college, you're white collar. You were good to go in 1980. Yep. You could buy a house and a car all on your own. Yeah. yeah. You could buy yeah. a house <laughs> and a car, maybe two cars. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All while mom stayed home with the kids. Yes. Yeah. And now, Doesn't instead of that comfortable shit. living, <laughs> it guarantees insane student debt. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I I mean am, my wife just paid off one of her loans. Yeah. You know, and she still has two more to go. I'm I'm tw- I'm the youngest on my my team. I have a team of eight people at work. I'm the only one without a degree, and I'm making just as much as all of them. Yeah, three of them have masters. Yeah, and they're probably paying out the ass. Oh, for I can masters. only imagine how much they have. So, perspective: a friend of mine, she went to law school. She went to Harvard, and she was there the entire whatever seven years it is or six years yeah. for bachelor's degree and l- law school. Her student debt, oh, man, I can't even 250000 Oh, okay. that's even higher than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Well, she's out of, out of state. Damn, that oh. gave me a little bit of anxiety, and that's not even my debt. I so, was thinking like the 150, 175 range. Now, oh. she, she makes around 300000 a year in Texas, but it's still with her current payment schedule that she does, she said it's still going to take her 10 oh, yeah. years oh, yeah. to pay it off. And I'm sure she's putting in a chunk too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know a lot. This is the one area of lending that I don't touch, 
but I've heard that the payment schedules on those and how they calculate the interest is pretty fucked. Like as you go along, the the, the interest kind of uh, compounds. I, like I said, well, I don't know this think exactly. Think of it like a mortgage. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that there's deferment of payments, yeah. that's why you start seeing a lot of younger folks staying in school to go get their master's degree because they couldn't find a job mm-hmm. when they finished. So they can defer those payments until they get through yeah. their master's program. Yep. And all that time, they're still desperately searching for a, a good paying job. Mm-hmm. It's also the only debt that you cannot get exonerated. Right. You cannot, yep. you cannot claim it because it's a federal loan. Yep. You can't claim, you can claim bankruptcy, but it's still going to be there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't uh, God, expunge that. Ridiculous. So 40% of millennials have student debt compared to 24% of the boomers. You, you said that wrong. What do you mean? It's a uh, cop married. Oh God. I didn't write that. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, I also misspelled millennials <laughs> 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 a lot. <laughs> I corrected most of them. <laughs> Uh, and according to Experian, the average student debt amount for millennials is 34504 which is an 8% year-over-year increase. Now... And that's the biggest increase they've seen. I'd, I'd say that's that's higher than, like, what my wife had, but it's pretty fucking close. Right. That's, that's, I mean, that's in, a nice car. That's in-state tuition. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's, if if you if you want to go to anything, and that's in-state public university. Yeah. Yeah. So it's these things matter. And people say, oh, millennials are doing this. And millennials, millennials are strapped. Millennials that's, are living their life the best way they can. Yeah. I mean, we give them shit because, I mean, that's what yeah. everyone likes to do. Yeah. No, it's, it's, What's, it's an what, easy target. What pisses me off is that when most people are referring to millennials now, they're actually referring to Gen Z. They're referring to the people that were born after 1995. Millennials are not in high school anymore, guys. No. <laughs> The no. the youngest millennial is 23, 24. Yeah. Yeah. The, most of them have graduated college already or yeah. past the university age. Right. Yeah. So when you hear about these kids doing, you know, the light yourself on eating fire Tide challenge, pods. eating Tide pods, you know, you sniff, don't, don't, that's the Gen don't, Z. That's don't Gen admonish Z. them. Don't admonish them for that. Encourage it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> encourage them to eat Tide Pods. <laughs> encourage them to take the fire challenge. Amen. Encourage them to do the acid challenge. That's where you drink a bunch of acid. Okay. I was li- liquid Drano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared to powdered Drano? Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, you could snort it. They make powdered powder, uh, Drano sticks. <laughs> um, Learned mo- that on Project Farm. Shout out. Millennials are buying <laughs> motorcycles that are more fit for purpose. Lower CCs that are meant for commuting and heavily urban-esque environments not for touring or carving the twisties out on the country roads. This is an important thing to really n- note because Gen X, if you want to call that, just the older folks, the older generation who was the prop or the kickstand for Harley Davidson. Oh, good, good, good one. Yeah, I, I like, like that. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Could have gone with Jiffy stand. They bought it because it was cool. They bought it because they wanted that easy rider lifestyle or oh, yeah. the all the movies from the 70s yeah. Yeah. that portrayed that outlaw rebel attitude. Oh, yeah. But millennials don't care about that shit. No. They want something that is a means of transportation that's Practical. easier to own than a car. Yeah. And I'm curious if like... Cause we're, we brought up the, the urban-esque environments. How many like of the demographic age groups live in an urban environment versus the small towns? Because, I mean, the small towns have quickly diminished over like the last 30 to 50 years. So we, in America at least, we are seeing a reverse urban sprawl. I, I can see that. I can see that just in the suburban areas of San Antonio. I mean, so, think about it. Bernie. Um, Blanco, Boverde, all those places are blowing the fuck up, trying to get away from the city. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of work in San Francisco. And I tell you, San Francisco is like the millennial capital 
of the U.S. No, I believe it. And there are more motorcycles there than you see cars. Oh, especially in California. Yeah. I mean, you can fucking hop on the the 101 or whatever the fuck the highways are out there. and Highway 1? Actually make it to somewhere without taking four hours to get there because you can lane split. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, traffic is not a thing for motorcycles. Yeah. I mean, in, in places like that, that really does... I mean, it took you, what, fucking 55 minutes to get here today? Oh, yeah, it took me every bit of an hour to to get here today. To go 20 miles? I think it's 21 miles. Yeah, Yeah. so if you were on your bike and lane splitting was legal, fucking 10 minutes. I'd have been... (laughs) 10, 15 minutes. Like, when I show up on, like, a Saturday or something like that, yeah, you know, I leave at my normal time and give myself an hour, and I always fuck it up, (laughs) and I'm here in, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm here. I Remember, guess I can go get me something to drink. Stoplights, I... you're always the first one there. Yeah. Highways, you're never stopped. It's, yeah, yeah. That, would, that would knock so much time off of your commute. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so looking at it like that, you see all the, we call them the urbanites, but they still need some form of transportation. But you live in a city like San Francisco, it's expensive as fuck just to park oh, your car. God damn. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. New York has officially past the threshold where it is more expensive to have a vehicle than it is to rent an apartment <laughs> per month when you factor in registration and parking all that insurance all that stuff it is more expensive than apartments and you know apartments in new york are not cheap fucking a i was listening to neil degrasse tyson's podcast he pays six hundred dollars a month just for his parking spot yeah just for the parking spot i'd lose my shit if somebody parked there <laughs> Oh, God. That'd set your fucking car on fire. <laughs> well, and then you pay all that money just to own a car. Just to own a car, yeah. And you want to go enjoy the ride? You nope. can't. You're, you're stuck in traffic. Like I, I mean, go watch a YouTube video of traffic in New York City. Average speed of a vehicle inside New York City is like 3.4 miles per hour. <laughs> fucking A. Um, another area that we need to focus on design tastes are not the same as the Gen X riders. We like the more vintage cafe style design with a less is more concept. Now with that, I, I cannot necessarily agree a hundred percent. Um, the city folks, if you want to call them that, I see them liking those style bikes more, but for us, we, I like vintage paint. I like the vintage paint schemes, mm-hmm. but eh. no, I like I like more futuristic stuff. Yeah, in yeah. general, like the Confederate bikes. Fuck. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to talk about how these factors are altering the industry. But first, let's hear from Nutsack. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C dot com slash B the number two W to get yours today. And we are back. Now, before we get back to into the episode, let's talk about our saddlebag giveaway. For everyone who donates $20 Project Clean Slate, you will be entered into a drawing to receive a set of Advan Black color matched stretched saddlebags. Now, we are limiting this to only 500 entries. And if you want your name entered more than once, donate an additional $20 for every entry you would like. And remember, if you don't win, you can rest assured that the money is going to a great cause and it is a tax write-off. So head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, click the Project Clean Slate, and donate today. Okay, so how how do all these factors alter the industry? So 
we have seen a massive growth in the sub ten thousand dollar bike range. Oh yeah, a lot of them are coming out. New models that are more kind of the resurrection of the old glory days, such as the bobbers and the cafe racers. Every major manufacturer has some form of bobber or cafe racer or cafe yeah. racer. Yeah. Significant design enhancements in the middleweight engine classes, primarily around that 500 to 800 cc's. Manufacturers are making these bikes cool again. Cool. Cool. <laughs> now, clearly, the manufacturers are listening to the millennials as we are seeing greater advertising and R&D spend on these smaller, more agile motorcycles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, bucking the systems, or the systems, Jesus, bucking the system itself. Millennials do this. They are disruptors. Yep. Well, yeah. Millennials don't want big, expensive motorcycles. They want cheap transportation with a low cost of entry and amazing fuel economy. Now, I did the research on this. On the market today, there's 53 cars that get 45 miles per gallon or better. The average Harley gets around 40 miles per gallon. But yeah, that's also, I'm assuming, 53 cars that get 45 miles per gallon on the highway. Yes. So the combined will be lower. Agreed. Right. I, I would say but overall. 5 to 10 lower. But if you look at the combined Harley, it's going to be less than 50 Less than forty-five as well. Oh yeah, I think I average. Uh, but we're not like, talking about combining when you're talking about an urbanesque environment. You're correct. Talking ninety percent city. City. Yeah. Right. So those things matter, though. Massive hogs are no longer cool in that sub thirty-five-year-old range. Unless it's the battle donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Lean, mean, and cheap are the names of the game here. Yeah, and, and, and cheap is in. And finance cost. wise. Yeah, cost yeah. wise. Cost. They yeah. still want they, they premium. Want a, they want a premium product for a cheap price. Right. Uh, do you think a lot of that has to do with kind of, I think we've talked about this a lot on on previous episodes, but for example, like when I was looking for a truck, like my dad was always a Chevy guy. And you always hear guys, oh, my dad was a Ford. So that's what, but you're seeing more and more now of, I don't give a fuck what logo is on the front. I want to go and you know compare also the power of the internet Mm -hmm. has to be a huge factor within this absolutely within 10 minutes you can get the stats on every single bike in your price range oh yeah and which which ones stay on the road the longest which ones have the cheapest maintenance costs yeah when do you have to maintain them how easy is it can you do it yourself oh let me go on youtube and look how to do it myself i mean and you have that crowdsourcing of comments reviews things like that of yeah people and millennials i think are more likely to grasp that the people who are doing these reviews some of them are paid to oh, do yeah. the review for sure you can tell i mean yeah. it's pretty night and day well that's it's, why if you're looking like, at reviews you know the best reviews to look at are the you know if we're going out of one to five stars the criticals is the three, the three star, and fours yeah. the, the three and the the four stars yeah and and actually read the comments and say okay is this something that's going to affect me yeah. Does yeah. this seem like it's something that, you know, is going to happen? And how many of those comments do you read? It's kind of like the Amazon effect. Like, the 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 weak die. Yes. You know, you can't... It's not like the, you know, late 80s, early 90s where you can sell a shit product and still, you know, make bank. Yeah. yeah. It's if you have a shit product, people are going to find about it, find out about it. They're going to find out about it quickly. And if you have a good product, same effect. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's like I said the Amazon effect that the fat gets gets trimmed off very quickly oh yeah definitely the cream rises to the top as some southerners would say <laughs> so think. this Maybe. last little tidbit of information I found actually kind of surprised me triumph had its largest sales growth in history primarily selling sub ten thousand dollar motorcycles to younger riders now this is the 40 year olds and lower younger <laughs> yeah well <laughs> compared to a gen xer who's in their 60s yeah, yeah true yeah. so are millennials actually killing motorcycling i think we already answered that question well, <laughs> so 
In my opinion, no. We are forcing the motorcycle industry to mature their styling models to appeal to more than just the 50-year-old married man with 2.5 kids going through a midlife crisis. We are demanding innovation while forcing the industry to do better by the environment. Uh, now, yeah. I think that's across every industry. Correct. Yeah. That's not just motorcycling. That's everything. With the rise of Tesla and I mean, zero motorcycles. Look what we did to Blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well, RIP. That's that's kind of my take. What do what do you did think, Justin? Um killing it, no. But like kind of like you said, we are definitely changing it. I mean, look at what I presume to be the the largest changing factors. I don't have any physical evidence on this, but I think most, you know, um, intelligent people would agree that social media has had a huge influence yeah. created by millennial ran by millennials. Uh, you can look at apps like uh, ride on or, you know, insert any other writing app here created by millennials ran by millennials. Uh, I know YouTube is a form of social media, kind of, but you have to look at motor vlogging in specific. I mean, even my channel, as small as it is, I've gotten at least, I would say, 50 over the, the span of three years of saying, hey, I got a bike because watching your videos. Yeah. Yeah. Created by Millennial. The platform was created by Millennial and is primarily watched and used by Millennials. So how many non-Millennials? Okay older than a millennial because who the fuck knows the Gen Zers, but how many, you know, Gen Xers are influencers in social media? Mm. Not a lot. There are some, but there's not a lot of them. And that's what, 40 plus? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, I would say... eighty. so yeah. Yeah. I think, is that right? 20, yeah. 39, older than 39, yeah. I mean... I can't think of a single one. Well, I mean, no. also Casey, <laughs> Casey Neistat looks old as fuck. I think he's over 40, but that's not motorcycle related. But yes, he is one of the more popular ones. Right. But yeah, I can't, I can't think of a single. I mean, well, the biggest YouTuber on earth, PewDiePie or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. Millennial. Millennial. Yeah. You know, the biggest tech YouTubers, millennials, every one of them. Yeah. I mean, a guy, a millennial came up with an idea of. Let me unbox something and share that experience with everyone. And the, the coolest part of getting a new piece of tech, getting yeah. out of the box and checking everything out. Yeah. Checking yeah. out your new toy. It's literally toy reviews for adults. <laughs> it really <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. It is. But yeah. all that information. Yeah. And, you know, I, I love Unbox Therapy. I think it's a great YouTube channel. It's very well shot. I hadn't watched him in a that. long time. But people just send him stuff and yeah. he. I mean, he's Canadian, so they're pretty nice people anyways, but he's very honest with his opinion. He's like, this sucks. Yeah. It is what it is, but I, I hate this sucks. box. Yeah. You know, or yeah. The packaging sucks or the packaging's great. Well, I, I don't give two shits about packaging, I but. Mean, I kind of do. I feel like if you package it well, you care about your product. I, yeah. I'm kind of on that same, that same boat. I mean, and at or, least. You know, of course the flip side of that is you package it really nicely to hide your shit product. Yeah. You, you polish a turd. It's still shit. Yeah. I, I would say though, in my experience, and this is across everything, not just motorcycle products. Usually when the packaging is nice, it's at least a decent product. Yeah. One that has really impressed me recently. Cardo. Was Cardo. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Their packaging is dope. Yeah. And they have an awesome product. Yeah. I'm, I'm so. I will never go back to Senna. I, no. I'm on the same exact boat. Nope. I'm, Senna I'm so glad it. that another company came up. and look, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about. Even with the king, so to speak, being crowned across, what, the last five to seven years, which being Cena, we gave the, I gave them personally three shots. I gave them at least $600. I gave them two. Of my personal money. I mean, money. I had the, the 20S Evo. Mm -hmm. And then I bought two 30Ks. Yeah. I had the 20S, the 20S Evo, and the 30K. Gave them over $600 of my money. And finally, I was like, there's got to be something better. And then, like I said, the Amazon effect, the cream rises to the top. I spent 30 minutes tops on the internet seeing if other people had had the same issues we were having and what they were doing. The answer was, check out the new Cardo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Car and before that, Cardo was known as the... The, the 
same priced, less quality Cena. Yeah. I mean, in our general group, at least. Yeah. I don't know how other people saw it. But even when we talked to them at IMS the first year we went, we we're like, wow, these really aren't that great. Yeah. But they put in the R&D. They put in the time. And eventually, they rose to the top. They listened to the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. What do y'all want? What is not working? Yeah. Like what how is you, working? How can you make a motorcycle comms unit that is mounted to the outside of your helmet and not make it waterproof? Yeah. <laughs> Cena. Yeah. <laughs> It, so there's there's just so many things. But before we continue down that rabbit hole, let's hear from you, Ken. What are your thoughts about this? So are millennials actually killing motorcycling? No, sort of. <laughs> I mean, so they're changing the way, like, like Justin said, they're changing the way things are done. Mm-hmm. You know, they want cheaper in price, mm-hmm. quality equipment, you know, that, that's going to be reliable. Like, so my wife, she, she started out on uh, just a, a scooter, like a traditional like Vespa style scooter, mm-hmm. because that's what she could afford. Mm. All right. And then she upgraded to her Ninja, her 600 Ninja. Mm-hmm. And that was her only vehicle here in San Antonio. Right. For several years. I mean. It's cheaper she, than a car. She, she was able to buy. Yeah. She was able to buy her Ninja. Mm-hmm. Brand new. It was a brand new motorcycle, so it's got all the warranty and everything. All I got to do is take it to the dealership, let them do the service, and it'll be taken care of, and it'll last a really long time. A yeah. long time. Yeah. And, I mean, of course, gas mileage is great. You yeah. know, of course, we don't have parking issues here in San Antonio, really. You know, it doesn't rain a whole lot. It doesn't necessarily get super cold, but, I mean, it does. You Very rarely. It is easy to year-round ride yes in south texas now, i mean it'd be harder you know you start getting up north i mean into i mean even austin or yeah. dallas or yeah. dallas you know it's obviously you know geographically it depends on where you live as to right. whether or not you could ride a motorcycle year-round in california you can ride year-round yeah Definitely. In, in the southwest you can ride year-round yeah but in new england they don't have that option but yeah Definitely. so so when her when she lost her car and it got wrecked she couldn't afford to go buy a new car you know, so it's one of the things. I don't think millennials are killing anything. I think they're changing the way companies manufacture and market products. Yeah. Do you think that they're killing the biker culture? No. 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 I don't think so. And so, what is the biker culture? That's a great question. What is it? So, I mean, are we talking MCs, like one percenters? Are we talking riding clubs? How about the culture that is? that was portrayed to that 50 year old man with two and a half kids. So the easy rider, Henry Fonda. Yeah. Type thing. I, I have to say that. I don't know. I, I think that are we killing it? Or are we making our own? I think that's a better well, way to look at it. Let's look at it like this. I kind of use biker culture and the clothing style it changes it yeah. matures it it goes back yeah. to the way it used to be but it gets better and well okay not not today because the, these high water or the high waisted pants on women i i know but mm. <laughs> some, some disagree them, yeah some <laughs> really good. but I, I think i think you're right though we are paving our own way yeah we don't we don't need to be badass outlaws to be cool in our own right. Yeah. No, I'm 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 just a cool fucking person. I think that I think that is really what it boils down to. It's breaking down a lot of the stereotypes and a lot of the borders of like we don't care if girls come around with us. No. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. We don't care if you're a Baptist or a <laughs> Jew or gay or straight or Asian. It's all just focused around the bikes. And yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think that was the case no. in the no, biker culture. Well, you look at not. the motorcycle clubs. You, you know, they're Harley only. Yeah. American made motorcycles or Harley only motorcycles. And they had to be over a certain CC. I mean, yep. it's like, yeah. And you we don't give at, a shit about that anymore. And I mean, don't well, show up, don't show up on a Grom because then you take forever. We've had Groms show and, up, and they take forever, and they do take forever. But yeah, but I, I think it's the generational gap. You oh, look yeah. at Gen Xers; they were the ones who were predominantly against homosexuals. You get 
our generation, we don't give two fucks. Yeah. It, not my problem. Although the media will say that we definitely give two fucks. Oh, we of course. definitely do not give two fucks. No. I would say nine I would say nine out of ten people. Yeah. In this area at least. Now this is of course going to change vastly depending on demographic. Yeah. But it's funny that, that Texas is painted as a, a very, you know anti gay state. Bible thump and anti gay state dude. No. No. Don't listen to people. No. Uh, even in San Antonio, oh San Antonio is kind of left leaning, but I would say even most you know, right leaning people that I talk to don't give two shits. No, I mean they don't. Most of the people that I talk to, even young and old, outside of the cities, because most of the you know San Antonio, Houston, Dallas are blue cities. Yeah, but you get out into the the rest of Texas, which is red. Most of them, okay, they may not, you know, they, they don't, don't really care. They don't approve of it. They don't approve it, but they don't care. They're not going to yeah. shame you for it. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. that's kind of. Where I mean, there's a big difference there. I mean. You when, might get some of those stories of like, you know, the the dad being disappointed, but you don't get the stories of like the dad never talks to the guy anymore. Yeah. yeah. I so, mean, and not just with homosexuality, interracial. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Texas you know, is painted as a very racial state, too. And it's. Uh, I don't I don't see how because white's not a dominant race in Texas. No, not from what I see. And I it's mean, a super diverse state, too. Yeah. I mean. But like growing up, when I brought a black girl home for the first time, oh yeah, mom freaked out. She's like, really? "Well, I'm okay with it, but it's gonna be really tough for you." I was like, "In what world do you live in?" Yeah, I mean, you I know me growing up, that we, that we had, you know, really he was thinking back, and you know, in Pampa, Texas, with all of nineteen thousand people, think he was the only black kid that I knew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he lived right behind me. And we played together all the time. My yeah. mom told me a story that one day I came home, I was crying. She was like, why are you crying? I said, because I got the wrong kind of hair. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what are you talking about? I said, Willie, he's got really cool hair and I want his hair. Uh, That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> so, but again, when we look at millennials, we're really good about coming together as pure individuals and finding that common ground that unites everybody. Yeah. Come as you are. And outside of that unification, no one fucking cares. Yeah. You get these old guys who come out on your group rides. They're worse riders. And again, <laughs> far. this yeah. is, this is our particular group. So it is what it is, but they're they're not as good. They don't pay attention. They're less safety conscious. They're less social. Less social. Yeah. More. Um, and that's saying a lot because of Justin, because he's one yeah. of the most antisocial people I know. Yeah. Facts. But we all get along. How many bullshit fights do you see in a millennial group outside of an argument? Zero. I don't. Yeah. I can't think of a single like. I can't even think of a single heated argument that has ever taken place. No. I mean, you get kid and I in a room, anyone who brings up something, you will get jumped for oh, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's going to be some some verbal assaulting, but if you can't take a, a small verbal assault, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bringing up one thing that this, this is one of the events that sticks in my head more than anything, and it was an older gentleman. He was probably early 60s, is when we took a ride to Lukenbach. He was a writer and an MC. I don't remember what MC it was, but he pulled me aside specifically to tell me how I shouldn't have ridden from San Antonio to Lukenbach, which it's like 70 miles, yeah. 80 miles. Something. It's not a long ride, but he said if he was leading it, he would have at least stopped three times because it gives more people more time to, to socialize and interact. I'm like, I'm not here to, Chitty chat. I'm here to ride. This is a fucking motorcycle ride. This isn't a social club. Like, and by the way, look over at that table. Every single person that rode here is having a, a meal together, talking, talking, yeah, about everything. And you and your buddy who came with us are over here on your own. Yes. So fuck you. Exactly. Don't tell me how to run my rides. <laughs> and and you know we've we've mentioned it on numerous episodes around the safety aspect. Yeah, it's huge. 
Oh, we, man, even you, though people on the internet say I'm one of the least safe. You got hammered oh. for your fucking video oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 on the sure. safety of group rides. Even though they couldn't see the, the fucking satire of I was using my own fucking clip to describe what not to do. Because I'm a fucking human being. Well, yeah. And I fuck up. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's why I don't go on group rides and haven't done so in 40 years. I'm like, then why the fuck are you clicking on a video that says the five things not to do in a group ride? I don't understand it. I do not understand that baby boomer logic. I'm sorry to call it a generation, but it's always you fuckers. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and that's that's what's fun. We can see the demographics when people comment or whenever people are viewing our videos we can see the demographics. I can see the demographics of the people who listen to our podcast. Yeah. And I am happy to say that the majority of our demographics are under 40 years old. Hell yeah. Shout out. And maybe it's because they're the only ones, the only generation that knows how to use a podcast. (laughs) Facts. Could be. (laughs) But. Could be. (laughs) But one of the things. was like a download the app. (laughs) How do you do? can, Can I just see it on TV? Yeah. When's uh, it come on television? Oh, oh, what oh, channel's it on? <laughs> oh, you're on the radio. I, I like how all you those old people voices are like old Southern. Yes. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what old people are. <laughs> are. Are there old people that aren't Southern? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I feel like they all have starch jeans as well. Yes. <laughs> like corduroy still. Okay, don't 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 hate on the corduroy. Uh, <laughs> when it's cold out, those corduroys are nice. Plus, you can always hear me coming. I don't want to hear you coming ever. <laughs> oh God. Ever. <laughs> okay, so closing argument. Okay. <laughs> because millennials like the smaller CC bikes, what sub eight hundred CC motorcycle would you own and why? Oh, that's a good one. I will kick this off. I want the KTM 790 Duke. Great bike. Never ridden it, but it looks cool. <laughs> it, it looks cool, and I've, I've watched a lot of videos of other people riding them, and it looks like the perfect ergonomically set up naked bike. I mean, your your riding stance on it looks, it looks like they actually took the time and engineered the rider triangle on that. Plus... It's just a badass looking it, bike. KTM it, is killing the game. With the it bugs. looks super fast when it's on its kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. No. Well, I mean, hey, and and it's got the same name as my dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, plus sign me up. <laughs> Orange is one of my favorite colors. Orange yeah. is a good color. So, Safe, safety first. Right. All right, Ken, what are you? What are you thinking? So I kind of went with a kind of a generic millennial answer. God, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus it said for commuting around town, I'd take most any sport bike. Okay. I mean, really, that's what that's one of the only good things they're for. Like, yeah. I mean, if you, it's just most any sport bikes in the six hundred range. Mm-hmm. I mean, or even the three hundred cc range. Yeah. You know, you're going to get excellent gas mileage. Their reliability, as long as you're buying a common brand. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, you're not Apollos, the Phoenix, <laughs> or whatever. Hawks. Uh, Hawks. There Hawks. you go. <laughs> Hawk. You can get a Hawk God, 250cc four-stroke on Amazon delivered to your door. Do you know that? I did not know that. Sure I did not. You could, wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. So, yeah. So, you, pretty much. You're any, talking about the actual Hawk motorcycle. We're talking about <laughs> Hasso's blind old ass. Hold on. Can, can, can we tell the story so sure, the, sure. the users can. Okay. Fucking derailing this show for a second. But trust me. It's this, still this, motorcycle related. This story is great. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, uh, our riding buddy Hasso, who you've seen in a lot of my videos, uh, jumped on the dirt, dirt bike train with us. Mm-hmm. So me, Team Bradley, Roblox, and Hasso all bought dirt bikes within a month. So we all show up to a gas station before we go ride the last time. And he got a Kawasaki 250 um, dual sport. Mm-hmm. So it's a street legal bike, has a title and everything like that, blinkers, lights, you name it. But the uh, previous owner had, like, painted the plastics and things like that. So it had some stuff done to it. And he comes up and asks us, he goes, have you guys ever heard of Hawk Motorcycles? And I was like, no. Yeah. It does, doesn't ring a bell. Like, I've heard of, like, Apollo and, like, the other Chinese brands that, like you said, you can buy on Amazon or at the mall or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, no. He goes, yeah, I think they're, like a, like, a sister company of Kawasaki. Like, they just, like, go by a different name. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes on my title, it says Hawk. But on, everywhere on the bike that has a stamp on it, it says Kawasaki. I'm like, 
is it a Kawasaki VIN? He goes, yeah, it's a Kawasaki VIN. And I was like, so when you type it into like the DMV system, it says Kawasaki. He goes, yeah. I was like, that's something's fucky here. Like all the stamps on the motor say Kawasaki. Mm-hmm. The 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 VIN plate on the on the frame of the bike says Kawasaki. I'm like, this something's up. Well, it matches a Kawasaki. It doesn't say Kawasaki. Yeah. <laughs> and so he he goes into his truck and he brings out his title. He just bought the bike. Yeah. Okay. okay. He brings out the title and goes, look, right here, Hawk. You know how, like, on the titles, it's kind oh, of like shit. that weird, like, like uh, what's that? The typewriter print? Yeah. Yeah. It's K-A-W-K, but the K has, like, a long line in the middle, so it sort of kind of looked like an H. But me and Roblox both instantly so weird font. recognize that it says K-A-W-K, short for Kawasaki. We're like, that's K-A-W-K, you stupid fucker. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> He doesn't have any sort of reaction on his face. He just goes and puts the title back in the truck. Tell him to put his fucking reading glasses on. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, that also, was one of the also, hardest times I've laughed in a hot minute. <laughs> also, we love you, but it's time for bifocals. Yep. yep. Get you some readers. You can get them at Sam's. <laughs> Multi-pack. You can keep one in your office, one in your car, one in your motorcycle. <laughs> one in your hawk. <laughs> one in your hawk. <laughs> in your hawk. <laughs> it scares me to think that he's riding that bike on the street. Yeah, that's his commuter. It's his computer now, yeah. But oh, what's cool man. is he's a Gen Xer. He is a he Gen is. Xer. He's oh, what fuck. an old fuck. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go back to the, the closing argument. Justin, yeah. let's hear from you. Sub 800cc motorcycle, which one I owed and why? Uh, I put down both the FZ07 and Triumph Street Triple because I'm a millennial and I do what I want. Um, reason being is that they're cheap. The FZ07s you can get for like used, you can get them in the $5,000 range. Brand new, I think they're like seven five or seven six. Uh, it's got a lot of tech into it. It's got um, riding modes, trash control, ABS. Or it's not. Is it FZ07 now or MT07? It's MT. I apologize. Yes. Okay, they, so they, they did change it. They did change okay. it. It was FZ for US, MT for overseas or international, whatever. But they have now combined them all to okay. be MT. Okay. Finally came to their senses. Yeah. Good. Uh, so MT07. Sorry for if I confuse anybody. Uh, or the Triumph Street Triple. That's. Uh, the baby version of the speed triple okay. it's got their 676 motor in it i believe or something like that is it it's the triple is the three cylinders right? correct okay. so it's got a, it well the, the mt07 is also a triple uh, oh okay they are both triple cylinder motors so they have a very linear torque curve very torquey bikes very responsive bikes fucking wheelie machines the fz07 is just a kick-ass looking bike i too. love that bike it's, it's sexy as fuck yeah all right well that's cool and then if you want to go into the show notes at between two wheels.com, the, the two spelled out TWO, you can see all of the uh, stats that I put down to prove that Zinules were made up. <laughs> Just want to point that out there. Wait, what do you got at the bottom there? That, that, that's, that's all the, uh, Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. These are all the, uh, where, where, where Zinule does not pop up. Oh, pictograms. <laughs> but I do like the Gen Z, the I Gen or the Centennials. I don't like Centennials. That makes them sound like they're winning a war. <laughs> or or <laughs> or they're seventy five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the bicentennial, bicentennial yeah. tricentennial. Anyways, Thir- but yeah, 13. he he actually How went. Why they call them centennials? I don't know. I've never heard any. Well, I've heard Gen Z, but I've never heard any of this I I Gen or any of that shit. I haven't heard a lot of these actually. Yeah, the, <laughs> the thir- silent generation. I've heard the silent. That is one yeah. that we actually uh, track for my job. But uh, the thirteeners. Never heard that either. Which is weird because the year range is only 14 years. So why would they be called the 13ers? I don't know. P- Here's the thing. All these generational names are marketing. Yeah, it's all marketing and stats and made up. But all, the, all of those names popped up yeah. a few times. Hmm. But uh, I, I look at it like this. Do you remember a There's life or more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go to the show notes. Check it out. I look at it like this. If you remember a time when the internet was not a thing, are you really a millennial? Yes. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I remember when the internet came out. I do too. I remember having to get internet on a CD-ROM. I remember having to take the telephone yep. and put it on the modem. Yep. And then you went on Netscape. <laughs> Netscape Navigator. And that's how I learned how to make my first explosives. 
<laughs> True that, story. That. In a school library. In wow. a school library. That's a smart place I, to do I, it, though. I looked up yeah. how to make bombs. Yeah, wow. the, yeah, that's back when you get the anarchist cookbook. I'm curious if you're on any list. Oh, I'm on a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you I am. <laughs> Whoa. Just his porn search history has him on a couple of lists. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I... And I'm not even ashamed if about you've been, that. If you visit a fish market, your fucking picture's up on the wall. Like, don't sell octopus to this guy. Don't fucking do it. Um, I remember one of the first internet searches I did. My dad had just gotten the internet all hooked up, and it was available to the kids to use. I, I went to playboy.com. Oh, nice. And I remember there's one image. It took 15 minutes to download. Wow. I remember that. And then I've tried to print it out because... Yeah, fuck having to wait fifteen. That's what minutes. you would do is print it out. And ugh, terrible, especially now when you think about it, my phone is a hundred and fifty times faster yeah. than that shit was. Oh yeah, but yeah, porn is what drives that industry. Can you, you even buy? They don't even sell Playboy magazines anymore, do they? They yeah. do, but they're not yeah. nude or they're not fully nude. I believe. Well, I heard that they'd made a change, but yeah, they, they weren't going to show. Digital. I don't think they were going to show VAD anymore. Mm-hmm. Only. Something well, they, like they that. Didn't well, they, they, they didn't show much They didn't show pink. Yeah. yeah, they didn't show pink. No, but that was yeah. Penthouse. Yeah, Larry yeah. Flint yeah. broke that uh, hustler. Was, yeah, you want y'all want to hear my first internet porn story? It's yeah. a good one. So, I went over to my friend's house. He's like, "Dude, uh, my parents were gone. I printed out like a, a huge stack of porn." I was like, "Sweet, dude, let's go check it out." So, that guy, me, and another one of our buddies all went over to his house because his parents fucking worked till like eight o'clock every day. So this kid was, you know, a fucking weirdo, latchkey kid, huh? Yeah. Yes, that's a great way to put yep. it. He had an older sister, so she was in charge of, of watching us, but she didn't. She yeah, she was talking on the phone with her friends. Yes, yes. Very stereotypical sitcom style family. Hmm. So we go upstairs to kind of like his loft area, and he starts like just passing out packets. I mean, fucking half an inch thick. And we start looking through them, and I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I'm like, I want to say like 11 or 12, so pretty, pretty young. De- haven't done you know the sex ed I-, I know the basics of you know what girls are supposed to look like and what guys are supposed to look like you know just very basic stuff and I start looking at it and I'm like there's something fucky with this and I look down at the URL that's printed on the bottom of the, the page mm-hmm. it's chickswithdicks.com <laughs> <laughs> this dude had printed out about 150 pages of trans porn I mean I'm cool with that I, had, I didn't know it existed, so I was, it was like. Mystified. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I went through the whole packet for of course. sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> for research purposes, if nothing else. Yeah, and then we traded and looked on the other other two packets as well. But I was like, dude, this isn't, this isn't normal. Like, they're supposed to, those parts aren't supposed to be there. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but this is like, you know, it's chicks with dicks. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> all right, bud. <laughs> Turned out that kid, that, that guy was gay. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, hey, see? More power to him. I don't give a shit. It's just a fun, interesting fact that he was looking at trans porn at 11 or 12 years old. Like, that was the first thing he printed out on internet porn search. Some of the weirdest borders I've had, man. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Worlds podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Uh, uh, uh,